you know, I'm conscious of, you know, we had a discussion today, people didn't know about the things that we've been doing yeah. in government, even though some of them we started two or three years ago. Yeah. And um, I think the government actually has not been as good as it should have been in telling our message. Wake Up To Business is your Get The Business Day Started program. Coming from the country's top business shows, expos and networking events. Join us as we discuss today's business news, strategy and gain some tips from our panellists who might help you in your business today. So can I ask you, have you, uh, as Business Biscotti, had any uh, meetings with any government ministers or officials in Department of Business? Um, can I name names? Yeah, yeah of course you can. <laughs> Uh, about four or five years ago, I sent an email to Mark Prisk, who was the then business yes. development of, uh, yes. MP, and he wrote back to me and said, Sue, you're doing such a job, fantastic job, you don't need our help. <laughs> ah. We really do, because the message that we push out is different from any other organisation, yeah. isn't it? It's different needs, isn't it? it? We it's are fit, fulfilling a gap in the market to enable these smaller businesses to have a lifeline, really. Well, listen, I, I, I can't promise another minister's diary. Okay. Uh, uh, I wish I could, yeah. uh, but I get into real trouble. But I, let's try to see if you can meet either Vince Cable yeah. or one of the business ministers so they can hear your story and ensure that you know as an organisation, given that you're, you've grown so fast yeah. uh, and so many SMEs and micros are part of you, you can be shown exactly where the vice is on the websites. So from your websites and your social media networking, you can point people I think at, least, at least to the vice that's available yes. now. And yeah. then maybe you can advise on what where the gaps are. Because yeah. this is one of the points also yeah. you were making earlier about, you know, if you've got a big corporation, you've got the money for a public affairs company. But when we're dealing in our own businesses and we've got one person or two people, we have not got that time to make that connection and lobby and get ourselves heard. Well, that's so, absolutely so right. these channels do need to improve. I mean, this kind of step you're just saying, it, getting Sue to meet with Vince Cable, for example, if that's possible. Yeah, well, I, I hope really it can be. really important, but also on a regular basis, that kind of thing as well, yeah. isn't it? I mean, I, I meet uh, with the uh, Surrey Federation of Small Businesses, um, uh, and I meet with the Chamber and various other people like that. Um, in fact, I'm holding a reception in the House of Commons in September for Surrey FSB, and if, yeah. if people yeah. want to come along to yeah. that, um, I'm sure the Surrey FSB would, would, would facilitate that. Um, so, you know, MPs of all parties, let's be clear, it's not a party political thing, all parties will want to engage the business, it's vital that they do. Um, the question is, how can we make that more effective? How can we make sure we respond more? In my department now, as Secretary for Energy and Climate Change, I'm conscious that in terms of the businesses that support, that supply energy, electricity and gas to people, we've got the big six who uh, you know, yeah. are, uh, control most of the market. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that market's more competitive, both for domestic uh, customers and business customers, actually. Although the business market is already a bit more competitive than the domestic market. Um, and we've done an awful lot. We've seen a big growth in their market share. We've seen a big growth in the numbers. And it's, it's really quite a positive story, actually. But um, I'm conscious that we need to do more. I'm also conscious, because energy is such a complex area, and the regulations are quite, because it's, you know, if you imagine, it's a lot of health and safety issues, a lot of really quite complicated things. Making sure that the voice of those small, new, independent players is heard is a challenge for us, and we're going to meet that challenge. That's, that's an that's interesting really one, important. because I've been involved in the Green Deal through oh, right. some local clubs in, in Reading with Reading Borough Council, okay, okay. looking at sustainable business and bringing together the SMEs so that they could collaborate and be in a better position to accept some of these tenders from the bigger organisations. The barrier for the SME is that, yeah, they want to collaborate, but the big organisations don't want to take the risk with the collaborations. That is the story that comes back to me time and time again. I, I have heard that, and it's one of these frustrating things where when government really does want to promote SMEs, I mean, and again, I think it's not one party, I think all parties want to do that. Um, and we want to find the best ways of doing it. Um, for example, the coalitions and a lot on procurement try to make sure SMEs yeah. could, could 
engage in a procurement for government contracts more Which easily. Which is great, up to £10,000. But once you start going to those bigger contracts, there's all of this uh, legislation and stuff that needs to come in. Now, one of the things we talked to Reading Borough Council about doing was bringing together SMEs as a collaboration and enabling them to pool their resources, so their health and safety resources, their staff resources, so that they were better placed as a collaborative to go and then tender for a uh, biomass boiler in a school. Or yeah, great idea. Mm. But Reading Borough Council said to me, we can do this ourselves, Sue, we don't need you, and they haven't done it. What I wanted to do was enable these people to come together in clubs, in green, sustainable clubs, so that we could actually make it happen and we could fulfil this government requirement. It still seems to be, the fundamental thing though is it's communication, isn't it? It's between micro-businesses and small businesses and with government, the policy makers. So is there a need for maybe that sort of regular standard meeting of anyone can come along from a micro-business to parliament to meet with the people that make the decision, some kind of formal arrangement? Well, there are actually lots of those meetings that happen. Right. The question is making sure people hear about them. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's all about communication, as you yeah. say. Um, and I, I think communication is, is difficult, uh, and we just keep working at it, even though we've now got new tools. Yeah. And the difficulty is we're all incredibly busy. I mean, you know, one thing I you know about the small business people is they're really busy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to say one thing about politicians, we are pretty busy too as well. Yeah. Uh, and it's trying to make sure that the, the system can compensate for that. We've got technology, and that's that's great. Um, but you know, I'm conscious of you know we had the discussion today. People didn't know about the things that we've been doing yeah. in government, even though some of them we started two or three years ago. Yeah. And um, I think the government actually has not been as good as it should have been in telling our message. Again, uh, in our defence. Part of the reason is that we've cut the advertising budget. When we came into government, we found the last Labour government had a massive spend on consultancy and advertising and so on. And we thought in tough times, you, you had to cut it's, it's, it's social media now, though, because you look at UKTI, and they're doing a great feed, a very straightforward, plain English, simple stuff, that you can see if something looks of interest or not. So stuff like that, I mean, it has changed so much. Yeah.